Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at a corded wear individual PL, PNL001. Uh, this individual has haplogroup RU106. This haplogroup actually falls into the R1B subclade. This individual is a part of the corded wear culture. And this individual is from Hungary. He lived in the uh, um, early early Bronze Age period, 29 centuries before the Common Era. Um, let's see what he scores with Eurogen's K13. So this is what he scores with Eurogen's K13 calculator from GED Match. As you can see, he is scoring 39% Baltic, 32.28% North Atlantic, 18.9% West Asian, 6.04% uh, South Asian, 3.0% uh, Amerindian and 0.5% uh, Siberian admixture with Eurogenes K13. Now, uh, what's interesting about this result with Eurogenes K13 is that he's scoring quite low for West Asian, quite low for somebody from Corridor culture, uh, quite high for uh, South Asian. Actually, Actually, maybe I take that back because um, I, am, I haven't been running Corridor samples for quite some time. Uh, I remember Yamnan scoring 30% plus West Asian, so maybe I was expecting him to score more West Asian because I remember Yamnan scoring like 35, 37% West Asian. So I was expecting him to score something crazy like 35% West Asian. And because of that, I was kind of shook. I was, um, I was flabbergasted by him scoring only 18.9% West Asian. So maybe that is why I am a little bit surprised that he is scoring so low for that. So he really doesn't have that much of an affinity to uh, to various groups of like like Pakistan or Iran. Nonetheless, relative to modern Northeast Europeans or modern Europeans in general, he does have a little bit of an affinity to like Iranians or people of Pakistan. And you can see that with the Oracle as well. For the mixed mode Oracle, the closest mixtures to him are a mixture of Finnish people plus Baloch or Finnish plus, pe Finnish plus Tabasaran. Tabasaran people are in Dagestan or Estonian plus Baloch, or Finnish plus Brahvi, or Southwest Finnish plus Baloch, or Estonian plus Brahvi. So a mixture of like Estonian or Finnish plus Baloch or Brahvi seems to be the closest closest admixture for this individual. Definitely very interesting. And keep in mind, this person is a corded wear individual from Hungary from the early Bronze Age period. All right. Let's see what he scores with the ethnic calculator with my own ethnicity calculator. That might be quite interesting to see. With 237 SNPs, which is definitely not that much, he is closest to Turkic low quality individual ULI002, followed by ancient North Eurasian Malta boy, followed by Livonian from medieval Estonian. Uh, Livonian individual from medieval Estonian is probably the closest to reality out of all of these results here, followed by Cordedware individual speaking us too. Once again, this is probably also one of the closest. Uh, results to reality here out of the out of all of the results in the Oracle, followed by Turkic individual from the Caspian Steppe, followed by Slavic mercenary from Himera, Botai hunter gatherer of Kazakhstan, Russians, modern Russians, Afontova Grad 3 and Turkish. This is quite distant from reality. And with the uh, closest two-way models, the closest two-way model is a mixture of Spiginos 2 corded wear plus once again Turkic low quality ULI 2. So it looks like relative to the Spiginos 2 corded wear sample, this individual has like a sort of a Turkic shift. But once again, when it comes to my um, ethnicity calculator, you have to keep in mind that the SNP count is, is very, very important. And with 237 SNPs, you cannot really get a very accurate prediction. Uh, unfortunately, this sample is just not very high quality. It, 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 this sample is like 15 or uh, 13 or something like 10, 10 or maybe even 10 megabytes in size. So it's just not very high quality and you cannot really get a very guy, very good prediction with it. Let's see. Let's see what this dude will score with my national code calculator. Very curious to see that. Okay, so it looks like he's got brown color eyes. Looks like it's either brown or darkest brown eye color for him. Definitely not blue or blue with amber or green. That is completely, completely out of the picture. Uh, very improbable. Any of these light eye colors, anything lighter than hazel is completely, completely improbable. Less than 1% likelihood of that. For hair, hair color, it looks like it's either black or dark brown. Uh, once again, any hair color that is lighter than dark brown is completely, completely improbable. 
For skin color, looks like it is either light brown or olive or Mediterranean skin tone. Any other skin tone for him is completely, completely improbable. So he's definitely very dark. Uh, it is quite typical for a Bronze Age European to be dark like this. Once again, uh, this sort of trend for depigmentation started a little bit later in Europe. For hair texture, looks like he's got wavy uh, or curly or straight hair. Sort of a, a hair texture that is just not kinky. He doesn't have kinky hair. That's pretty much the overall takeaway is that his hair texture is not kinky. It's something else that's not kinky. And for coloring related variants not found in the file, he doesn't have blue. I have a type 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. Essentially, he just doesn't have any of the blue eye haplotypes. And he does not have any of the light, any of the genotypes associated with coloring aside from uh, this genotype here in SLC. 45A2 that's relevant for eye color, hair color, and skin color, where he has two light color variants. Okay, so this file is just not very high quality, unfortunately. There is not much data to go off here in this file. All right, let's see what he will score for the phenotype oracle. That is also quite interesting for me to see. So the closest phenotype for him is this kind of like a dark color, uh, European looking phenotype. Um, I can definitely imagine a corded wear individual from Hungary looking like this. The second closest phenotype is this, and the third closest phenotype is this, and the phenotype mixtures, the closest mixture is a mixture 50% lat plus 50% this. The second closest mixture is 50% lat plus 50% this, okay. Um, I'm not going to go into the facial morphology oracle because that's like really, really, really difficult to make content out of that. So I'm going to ignore that a little bit. And let's see what he scores for the biomarkers. Let's move on to that. In the future, future for content, I might start to discard biomarkers because it kind of is difficult to make content out of that a little bit as well. So it looks like he's got higher than average odds for uh, higher than average levels of vitamin D, higher than average levels of LDL cholesterol, which is kind of bad, below average levels of HDL cholesterol, which is also kind of bad, higher than average levels of glucose levels, uh, higher than average levels of hemoglobin, uh, average levels of blood pressure, really, really good to see. Uh, below average levels of iron in blood, really good to see. Below average levels of sex hormone binding globulin and average levels of red, red blood cell count in blood. Pretty typical stuff. Let's see the polygenic risk scores right now. And it looks like he's got a very high score for epilepsy. Definitely very interesting to see. So he's definitely got a predisposition to epilepsy. That's uh, very interesting. He's got average score for asthma he's got a very high score for leukemia once again so leukemia and epilepsy is something this individual has to watch out for uh he's got average score for vitiligo he's got average score for myopia average score for primary biliary cirrhosis average score for stroke high score for male pattern hair loss but that's not surprising because this individual is a european high i mean nothing was found for atrial fibrillation nothing was found for deep vein thrombosis below average score for bipolar type one uh average score for schizophrenia uh, average score for type 2 diabetes, high score for Alzheimer's, so we have to watch out for Alzheimer's. Okay, um, below average score for multiple sclerosis. Looks like no no risk variance for breast cancer and some risk variance for testicular cancer and no risk variance for celiac disease, no risk variance for GSS and four risk variance for Crohn's. It looks like four risk variance in three variations. So there's actually a printed risk, uh, the variations where risk variance are found right here. Uh, I modified my program. It now prints the variations where the risk variants are found. Uh, no risk variants for Raffensteins in anywhere because none are, none are found in the file. File is low quality. And no risk variants for Parkinson's anywhere either. Okay, good to see. So if in your file, if you have risk variants somewhere, th this is actually going to print where they are. So you can do some research. I think it's really cool. It allows you to do a lot more in-depth research now. I, I really love that I added that. Uh, for results for mental health, it looks like this individual is actually a warrior, both in COMT and MAOA, definitely a warrior individual, higher dopamine levels and advantages in, in attention and motivation tasks. He's got less dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. And, um, <coughs> and for autism, it looks like he's got a predisposition to intermediate odds of autism or lower odds of autism. Actually, no, he's got a predisposition to lower odds of autism, which is definitely really good to see, uh, higher levels of empathy. Um, it looks like for cardiovascular disease, it looks like he has a predisposition to intermediate odds of cardiovascular issues. This is something I added yesterday as well. And this is not going to be on the itch version of uh, trait predictor as well. Um, this is going to be, maybe I'll push the update sometime in 
maybe next week or maybe even on May 22nd. I'm not sure. Um, for facial morphology panel, looks like he does not have East Asian EDAR. Looks like he has high rows of protruding nasal bridge, larger nose size, and has mandibular third molar, which means he does not have missing teeth. Um, for EDAR, he has European genotype in both EDAR variations, so he is definitely not an East Asian. Okay, and um, okay, let's see what else. For alcoholism panel, looks like his alcoholism risk score is essentially just the average average risk score for alcoholism. Uh, he has this gene type, which greatly reduces the risk of leukemia. So that that's that sort of explains his really high risk score for leukemia. He has this gene type, which greatly reduce, increases the risk of uh, ankylosing spondylitis. I'm not really sure what that is or when it, what it uh, manifests itself as, but sounds really bad. Um, for HIV and AIDS panel, he has two protective variants from HIV here, which leads to a 90% reduction in HIV viral load. Definitely really good to see. So he's somewhat protected from HIV. For HLA gene panel, it looks like he has a predisposition to lower odds of autoimmune disease. Really, really good to see. So he's somewhat protected from autoimmune issues. Really good to see. And for muscular dystrophy myopathies, it looks like he does not have any risk variants for that. Really good to see. For colorblindness panel, no risk variants in OPN1SW. Unfortunately, the other two genes, nothing relevant was found in the file. For syncope, based on 1SNP, he's got essentially the average risk score for syncope. He's got two copies of hunter-gatherer CLTCL1 gene variant, which leads to reduced ability to process carbs and sugars. And um, for blood group panel, based on three genotypes, he most likely has blood type A. But it's kind of difficult to predict blood type based on these three gene based on just three genotypes. So we can't really say, like we can't say exactly what his blood type is. It's really difficult. I mean, it is. It's not. It's not exact. This is not an exact prediction. So I can't really say what his blood type is for sure. Can't tell you guys. Uh, it's not a very high quality file, unfortunately. Uh, well, that's pretty much all there is for this individual. That's all I can say. Um, that's kind of all I can talk about here. Thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Um, leave a like and subscribe. Yep. And I also want to remind you that you can download this file in 23andMe format uh, from link which is in the description of the video. Goodbye.